Hi, I'm Dr. Dean Mitchell. I'm a board certified allergist immunologist and I want to talk to you today what is the better choice, an allergy injection or allergy drops? I think it's an important thing that patients should know the options that are out there to treat their underlying allergies. I think the answer will surprise you. Allergy shots um, have been around for over a hundred years. It actually started in England and uh, then came over to the United States where it was first done by Dr. Robert Cook at the Allergy Center in New York City. That's actually where I trained. Um, the protocol is very interesting. Each week patients would get typically several injections in the arm uh, at low doses and then were built up over a period of weeks and months. Typically it would take about six months to get to a high dose level where they could then just go once a month. Uh, and then they reach the maintenance dose, which they stayed at for several years, three or four or five years, to get protection. The good news is that this therapy, over time, proved to be effective. Many doctors thought it was voodoo and didn't understand how it worked, but it clearly showed that it was effective. You know, interestingly though, the fact that the patients come once a week for a shot actually originates in England, where they were doing allergy shots, and when I would ask doctors why are the shots only given once a week none of them seem to have the answer and we found out because the clinic in England that actually started doing allergy shots was only open once a week so that's the only time patients could come because the best way to desensitize somebody actually is to do it every day so let's look at allergy drops and how they compare to this allergy drops started about 30 years ago uh, in Europe mainly in Italy and France at top institutions uh, it came to the United States uh, probably in the 1970s, uh, early 80s, when Dr. David Morris in, in the Midwest in Wisconsin started doing it on his patients. Dr. Morris had uh, a large following of patients, but it was actually very quiet because it was very controversial at the time to do. I was fortunate to read a, a, a scientific publication that Dr. Morris wrote about using the sublingual drops in 1998, and I went to train with him in Wisconsin, and when I came back to New York, I started doing only the sublingual drops because I, had, I thought they had so many advantages. Let's look at the pros to uh, allergy drops. Now allergy drops, the nice thing about it is you can see it's not an injection, so there's no pain involved. Uh, and obviously all the children love this. It's the first thing they ask me, they go, am I getting a shot today? And I say, no, we're doing drops. Uh, also the adults seem to like it too because Again, it's that painful and it ties into something else where it's so convenient because they don't have to come to the office every week or every day to get a treatment. This is done at home. Now the other really important thing that was very important to me was that the allergy drops, the way we do our protocol, is very safe. So there's minimal risk of an allergic reaction. In fact, over 50 million doses have been given worldwide without a severe allergic reaction, which is not true, unfortunately, with the shots. And the last thing which I'm sure you want to know is, are the drops as effective as the shots? Because if the shots are better, maybe I should do that. Well, again, all of the studies seem to point that the drops are as effective and have been shown really definitively over the last 10 to 20 years how they can give long-term protection. What are the cons of these therapies? Well, unfortunately, most of all the con to doing allergy immunotherapies with the shots because the allergy shots, unfortunately, when you're giving it to patients, they can cause large local reactions, which are very uncomfortable and people have sore arms for a few days. Uh, even more dangerous, these patients can actually get an anaphylactic reaction, where that means where they go into allergic shock. And that's why allergy patients getting shots need to wait 30 minutes in a doctor's office so they can observe them. That's when most of the bad reactions occur. Um, now, in my book, The Allergy and Asthma Solution, which I published back in 2006, I talk all about these things and about my own journey and how I discovered with Dr. Morris doing these sublingual allergy drops and how it transformed my practice and how I was hoping it would transform practice in the country. So I guess in, in concluding, you would say, why would anyone not choose allergy drops over allergy shots? And I'm not sure I really have the answer. I mean, the only reason, unfortunately, is that the insurance companies are still covering mainly the shots. Although, if you really add up going every week for your shots and paying your co-pays, 
whether or not paying for the drops is still maybe cost effective and of course in saving time. Currently, I'm working with a company called MRS, where I'm trying to teach doctors all over the country how to do our protocol uh, in doing the drops so that I'm hoping that children and adults around the country that suffer from allergies can overcome their allergies and have permanent protection.